Zoom Video Communications reported fiscal 2024 first quarter earnings after the markets closed on May 22nd. The stock price is down almost 8% on the day following the announcement. So the market did not like what Zoom Video had to say. In this video, I'm going to review all of the big picture items that came out of Zoom Video Communications earnings results. Of course, Zoom Video I have rated as a buy. I'm also going to update that recommendation in this video. For 2023, if we look at Zoom Video's results, it's uh, having a mediocre year down 2.7% while the market is up overall. Of course, before these earnings were out, the stock was up a few percent, so it's fluctuated up and down. It's having a mixed year. So let's get it, go ahead and start looking at what happened in the most recent quarter. Revenue came in at $1.1 billion. That was up 3% from the same quarter the prior year. Surprisingly, Zoom Video has sustained the very high level of revenue it obtained during the pandemic. Right. Remember, during the pandemic, Zoom Video was an absolute explosive company. Everyone seemingly was working from home or learning from home, and we were all using Zoom Video Communications. It wasn't a surprise that the company's stock price zoomed higher, pardon the pun. But what's hurting Zoom now is not the revenue part of the equation. It's the earnings. Earnings per share was down to $0.05. Cents. That was from 37 cents in the same quarter the prior year. What's happening is Zoom Video is having to work harder to capture those sales. It's having to employ its sales staff, have several meetings, give promotions, incentives, discounts to secure and retain those customers they attracted during the pandemic. During the pandemic, they didn't even have to make a sales call. People were coming and knocking on Zoom's door asking for its services, automatically buying its services, not even asking any questions or asking for any discounts because it was so urgently needed. Now that it's not so urgently needed, Zoom is having to work harder to secure those sales and that's showing up in its falling profitability. What disappointed me was the increase in general and administrative expenses rising to 200 million. That was up from 118 million year over year. So that's a big increase in expenses. These are corporate expenses, things like salary for the CFO and CEO and rent maybe for an office building, maybe travel expenses, things like that which was disappointing during a time when most businesses are, are finding ways to cut costs or keep costs relatively flat. Zoom increased its expenses by a significant amount in this area specifically, which uh, I'm not too thrilled about, right? I don't mind if you take an opportunity to spend on research and development or to spend on sales and marketing during a time when your competition may be pulling back in those areas. So you see it as an opportunity to go out and get these things at lower prices. But for general and administrative expenses, I would prefer these to be flat or come down. So disappointing to see that there. Zoom boasts 215,900 enterprise customers. This was up by 9% from the same quarter last year. So again, impressive to see Zoom adding customers despite economies for the most part being reopened now. And, you know, work from home is just a couple of days per week thing for the most part. Zoom has 33,580 customers that are contributing more than 100,000 per year in annualized revenue. That's good news that it's got thousands of high paying, high value customers. The trailing 12 month net dollar expansion settled at 112%. Any figure over 100% in this metric means existing customers are spending more money this year than they did last year with Zoom. So that's good news. That's an indication that Zoom's customers are seeing good value in its services. Otherwise, they would not be increasing the spending with Zoom, right? If you're not getting a good value, you're going to decrease or move to another customer. The fact that customers increased spending is a good sign. Another good sign was cash flow from operations. 
which came in at 419 million compared to 526 million in the same quarter last year. So while earnings per share fell big time, cash flow from operations fell only by roughly 20%. That the main reason for that is a lot of Zoom's expenses are stock-based compensation, which is a non-cash expense. So Zoom has $5.6 billion in cash and equivalents as of April 30th. Now I've been talking about cash being more important this year because interest rates are so much higher. Companies like Zoom can use this cash, put it into high interest savings accounts and earn a good deal of money on these in on these savings, right? With $5.6 billion in cash, let's say at 5% for the year, that can be roughly $250 million in interest income for Zoom. That's, that's a good deal of income for a company whose cash flow from operations was $419 million in the most recent quarter. So that's a meaningful amount of income coming from just cash that's sitting around, not for its normal operations. That's a nice uh, tailwind for Zoom and other companies like Zoom that have this cash on the balance sheet. Zoom is forecasting 2024 revenue to come in at 4.5 billion. That was an underwhelming outlook considering that Zoom reported 4.4 billion in revenue in fiscal year 2023. So relatively flat in terms of revenue growth despite the fact that Zoom is spending aggressively on sales and marketing, research and development and keeping their costs high while it's not resulting in revenue growth it's just mainly resulting in customer retention so it looks like zoom is just needing to lower prices offer more promotions work harder to secure new customers and so revenue is not going to increase in 2024 so it's going to be a flat year and investors will see if starting 2025 zoom can return to their solid uh, double-digit growth rates that they were experiencing even before the outbreak so now to update my recommendation I had zoom video as zoom video stock as a buy coming into these earnings announcement after the earnings results I will still recommend zoom video stock as a buy although I am a little bit less enthusiastic in zoom video because of the mediocre outlook for the year and the increasing spending for the year so rising spending with a mediocre revenue growth outlook made me a little less enthusiastic so although zoom is still a buy in my book it's moving closer to a hold but it's still a buy all right so that's all i've got for this video thank you so much for watching I want to thank The Motley Fool for sponsoring this video. Visit fool.com slash parkev for the 10 best stocks to buy now.